Hello, in this presentation I will describe the t-distribution and its characteristics. Specifically, I will explain the properties of the t-distribution and the notion of degrees of freedom. I will then compare the t-distribution to the normal distribution and explain the applicability of the t-distribution in practice. The t-distribution, also known as the student's t-distribution, is a critical concept in statistics, particularly when dealing with small sample sizes and unknown population standard deviations. It was first introduced by William Seeley Gossett under the pseudonym Student in 1908, while working at the Guinness Brewery in Dublin. The t-distribution is used extensively in hypothesis testing, confidence interval estimation, and other statistical analysis. In practice, especially in fields like educational research, sample sizes are often small due to practical constraints such as limited access to participants or resources. The t-distribution accounts for the increased uncertainty in estimates derived from small samples. Unlike the normal distribution, which assumes a known population standard deviation, the t-distribution uses the sample standard deviation making it more applicable to real-world scenarios. The t-distribution is vital for constructing confidence intervals around sample means when the population standard deviation is unknown. For example, in educational research, one might want to know the average test scores of a small group of students. The t-distribution provides a more accurate interval estimate that reflects the additional uncertainty inherent to smaller samples. In hypothesis testing, the t-distribution is used to determine whether there is a significant difference between sample means or between a sample mean and a known population mean. For instance, uh, educational researchers might use t-tests to compare the effectiveness of different teaching methods on student performance. The t-distribution allows for these comparisons even with smaller sample sizes, ensuring that the tests remain reliable and valid. In terms of shape, the t-distribution is symmetrical, just like the normal distribution. However, it has heavier tails, which means that it is more prone to producing values that fall, fall far from its mean. The image below compares the shape of the normal distribution and the t-distribution. A visual comparison of the t-distribution in relation to the normal distribution shows that both distributions are symmetrical around the mean, which is usually zero. However, the t-distribution has more weight in its tails compared to the normal distribution. When sample sizes are smaller, the tails of the t-distribution are heavier. As the sample size increases, the t-distribution's tails become thinner and the distribution itself becomes closer to the normal distribution. The t-distribution assigns a higher probability to extreme values. These are the values that fall far from the mean compared to the normal distribution, especially with smaller sample sizes. The shape of the t-distribution depends on the degrees of freedom, noted as df. Degrees of freedom typically equal the sample size minus 1 for the t-distribution. As the degrees of freedom increase, the t-distribution approaches the normal distribution. For example, with a very large sample size, the t-distribution becomes nearly indistinguishable from the normal distribution. The image on this slide illustrates the changes in the shape of the t-distribution as sample size increases. The table on this slide summarizes the main differences between the t-distribution and the normal distribution. Due to its applicability to smaller sample sizes and data that do not have a perfectly normal distribution, which is most often the case, the t-distribution is most often used in practice than the normal distribution. It is used primarily in hypothesis testing, especially for smaller sample sizes, and is essential in constructing confidence interval for the means when the population standard deviation is unknown.
In this presentation, I explained the properties of the t-distribution, the notion of degrees of freedom. I compared the t-distribution to the normal distribution and showed the applicability of the t-distribution in practice. I really hope that the explanations provided were helpful.